Hi, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? So today we're going to talk about how to tie a heating element. Now, of course, this tie is something that is for uh, a temporary fix. It may not last very long. And so use at your own risk. Um, one of the most common problems with heating elements overheating is this the thermostats or improper venting. So if your vent is not working correctly, this would create an overheating scenario. And so the Thermostats can be generally checked with a meter. So if you set your meter on Ohm's continuity, this one actually has a tone so that when we touch the probes together, we have a tone. And we see here that this one is showing good continuity. Now, if we test this heat element, we don't get any continuity. So there's no continuity between the two terminals here. So that's not a good sign. That would cause your dryer not to heat. And so if we take a close look at this heat element, and it's best to try and not touch this heat element because oil on your hands can make one part of the heat element heat hotter than the other parts. So this one here has got a break in it somewhere. And it's not on this side. So let's turn it over. Take a look over on this side. Always remember to turn your meter off when you're not using it. And so if you look on this side, we see there's a break right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to straighten out this break a little bit. Then we're going to clean it up. Then we're going to tie it together. Okay, so... It helps to have needle nose. We got the ends cleaned up a little bit here. See the, just straighten them out a little bit and then clean them up. You want these as clean as possible. Okay, so here's the tie. So, I always like to leave the ends open on them, just so to kind of let them cool. Because what happens is if you put too many wines on the tie, it will cause excess heat to build up in that area. So you just want maybe five or six ties uh, pretty tight. You don't want to go too tight, otherwise you'll break the heat element. And then always make sure that this area here is not protruding up uh, that might ground out on the, the heat element housing. So if I put the heat element back in, we want to make sure that this doesn't touch the ground. Otherwise we'll have a short that could be hazardous to everyone's health. So uh, most likely if you had a short, it would just blow the fuse and not create a fire hazard. But uh, depending upon what kind of fuse system you have in your house, that's a different story. So also we want to make sure that the terminals are clean here and the spade connectors that go on are tight. Otherwise it would cause excess heat to build up on the terminals 
and then normally it will toast the wire. So if you see a spade terminal that's hooked onto your terminal here that kind of looks burnt, that means basically the spade terminal is too loose for the, connect, for the uh, spade here. Okay, before we hook this heat element up, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a short test, testing for shorts. If we look in there, we'll see that the heat element does not touch the housing at all. So we're just going to test that with a meter. Set the meter on continuity. One terminal connected and the other terminal to the ground. And we see no continuity there. So that's a good sign. And basically, once again, we make sure that the heat element does not touch the housing. And that's your tip for today. Thanks for watching. If you need any help, you can contact me at applianceworks at yahoo.com. If this video helped you, please send me a donation. Bill's Recycling Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. Z underscore fixitman at yahoo.com. And I also have a how to make money in the appliance repair business course. It involves a year of coaching and a link to over 100 repair videos. And if you're interested in that, you can contact me as well. Thanks again.